Yo, what up, what up, what up, YouTube? <clears throat> cops hate kids, kids hate... Ugh. Cops hate kids, kids hate cops. Cops kill kids with warning shots. Y'all remember that? That was Ice-T, squeeze the trigger. Bye, 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 bye. Yo, this album, turn, this album turns 35 today. It was released um, Janu um, January. July 28th, 1987. That's 35 years ago. Yep. No, I did not steal this from the library. I bought this at a library sale some years ago. And uh, I picked it up for about $2. This and a bunch of other CDs and DVDs. They was having a sale. And... Uh, they had a bunch of books for 25, 50 cents. Got a couple of books, a couple of CDs, like I said, DVDs. I think I spent like $10 and walked out with a bag full of stuff, a grocery bag full of stuff. I don't know if they was going out of business or just trying to get rid of stuff. This was at the time when uh, YouTube had first became popular and people really wasn't purchasing CDs like that anymore. And uh, I had uh, found this this gem. It was buried under a bunch of rock CDs. But anyway, that's Ice T and his beautiful ex-wife Darlene. Man, I thought she was fine. He didn't even need a bunch of girls surrounding him. All he needed was his wife. All he had to do was just say, "Hey, baby, just put on a, a on a bathing suit. Come take this album cover picture with me." And dudes was watering at the mouth. But anyway, this album, Ryan Pays, this was the first gangster rap album. Now, Schooly D was out a couple years before this with PSK and Saturday Night and uh, Gucci Time. Yeah, he was uh, he was on some gangster shit. He was the first, but Ice-T came with a... With, he was the first to come with a full album of nothing but gangster shit on wax. Six in the morning, rhyme pays. Pimp it ain't easy, but somebody got to do it. Make it funky. 409. Yo, to this day, I still clean my sneakers with 409. He was talking about we clean our Adidas with 409 to this day. Ever since I was in second grade. I was in second grade when this album came out. To this day. I still use 409 to clean my sneakers, my white sneakers. Because you can't put bleach on your white sneakers. And regular soap, uh, it'll do the trick. But 409, it's something about that 409 that'll have your white kicks nice, white, and looking new again. Especially the bottom sole part. If the bottom sole part is white, get you some 409 and, a, and an old toothbrush. Or just buy a toothbrush toothbrush specifically for your sneakers you know but yeah this is the first gangster rap album and that song squeeze the trigger that shit went hard that and pain but squeeze the trigger it was in uh the movie colors remember when uh rocket was sitting in the abandoned house he was sitting in that abandoned house with the with the boom box next to him he was listening to squeeze the trigger right before they had that shootout with the mexicans Da, 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 squeeze the trigger. Damn, this album 35 years old. Got a Uzi on the back. This is the first, first gangster rap album. He wasn't the first gangster rapper, but this is the this was the uh the uh blueprint. You know what I'm saying? This was the template for other gangster rappers that came after him. You know, like N.W.A. and Ice-T. Too Short was out. Too Short was on some pimp shit. He was on some gangster shit, too. As a matter of fact, Too, too Short's Born to Mac and uh, Ice-T Ryan Page came out in the same month, July 1987. I lived in I lived I lived on the East Coast in New York and uh, people really wasn't playing Too Short like that. But they was playing Ice-T. And uh I believe this was his first full-length album. Yeah, this was his first full-length album. Now, I had saw Ice-T in a couple of movies prior to this. 
I think he was down with Uncle Jam's army or something like that. You know, they were they were making like 12 inch singles, I believe. And uh, I saw him prior to this in, in, in a couple of movies. He was in Breaking One, Breaking Two. And he was also in this low budget movie called Rapping that came out in 1985. And after rapping, that's when he started doing albums. And then uh, he went on to uh, do another album after this called, um, damn, I forgot the name of it. It was with, uh, it had had, had uh, colors and um, high rollers on it. Forgot the name of that album. But uh, damn, how the hell I forget the name of that album? It had I'm Your Pusher on it and shit. Then he went to play in... Um, New Jack City. I was mad that Ice Two, uh, that Ice T, wasn't in the movie Colors. I thought for damn sure when I was a kid, I was like, Ice, I know Ice T gonna be in Colors because the video was so realistic. I was like, he had it would have made sense to put him in the movie, but you know, that wasn't the case. I guess it made sense to to uh, Warner Brothers to the to, to, uh, have him on the soundtrack <laughs> since he was on the Warner Brothers label and he was the king of the West Coast at the time. Yeah, put him on the soundtrack. Yeah, Ice T, squeeze the trigger. Da, 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 da. He didn't have a video for this album either. Just a bunch of singles, and people were pissed. Believe it or not, this was the first rap album. A lot of people say LL Cool J's "I'm Bad" was, but uh, this was the first rap album to have the. Uh, this is the first. This was the first rap album that I saw that had the print, the, the parental advisory logo on it. You can't see it. You can see it a little bit right here. These stickers are covering it up. Yeah, Schoolie D had explicit lyrics warning. He didn't have the official black and white parental advisory sticker on his. LL, LL, and this LL, I'm bad, and this album right here had the official logo. The first album I saw, I think it was uh, Princess Purple Rain. Yeah, the Pr uh, Princess Purple Rain had had the uh, parental advisory sticker on it because uh, Tipper Gore didn't like the song "Darling Darling Nikki," and and there was a big uproar about that shit. A lot of politicians got mad, and from that point on, they started monitoring music. And Ice T was on Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers was like, "Hey." Gotta put this on your album cover. But yeah, if y'all ain't got this album added to your collection. I remember when I saw this album cover as a kid, I always wanted to take a picture <clears throat> near a palm tree. And it took me 41 years to actually do it. When I went down to Florida last month, I took a picture standing by a car in front of a palm tree. I wanted to be MC Ice T. Your childhood dreams never die sometime. Joe, holla at your boy. Cop this album, peace.